Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. It is Monday. You know, pretty slow day if you were just looking to trade the indices. But overall, there was actually some decent movement you know, for an August uh, Monday, you know, as earnings season starts dying down. You know, over the weekend, there were some reports of a potential terrorist attack, so we weren't sure how the markets would handle that. Overall, though, you have to say every, you know, everything's been taken in stride. I'm just going to start going right through a lot of these stocks. First things first with the spiders. You know, talked today with Brittany about you know, what type of speed we could have here. And I said, first time, remember this, when we gapped up, could we hold above this gap? It took about 13 to 14 sessions. And then finally, last Thursday, we broke out above it and then held it on Friday and then today in stride. So overall, holding above uh, SPX 1700, above you know, spiders 169.85, 170 is healthy. We've seen a, you know, quite, a, quite a move from these lows here, but overall, you had your move, you had some digestion, we took it out, digested again, and you know, I'm not sure how many sessions it's gonna take to, to hang out above this, but overall, you know, nice, uh, nice digestion. You know, if this thing gets above 170.97 in the next session or so, it can continue. So over the weekend, there was uh, two negative pieces on Netflix and GMCR, two stocks that you know, we trade pretty um, consistently over here. All right, we've also seen negative articles by Barron's, which I, they have some positive articles too, but I remember you know, Tesla, when we were all trading Tesla, there was a, a piece out that was uh, you know, conservative about it or concerned about it, whatever. And then obviously, you know, Facebook, which I you know, tried to talk about so many different times at the highest night in, when they put that $15 target on Facebook, it seems as if uh, everyone was ranting and raving that we um, are just permabulls here, which isn't the case. We're not permabulls. We follow trends. We look for very strong situations. We like stocks with tight flopes, flight flopes, <laughs> floats, growth situations that stick around. Okay, so let's look at Netflix. Netflix came out, you know, um, you know, with the, the earnings weren't, you know, the best or it wasn't as, you know, as good as it was the past few times when it when it went. So it's been in this range. So with that said, today. It was a, a, or over the weekend, there was a negative article. Um, I think some people on my team came in long and they said, okay, you know, as long as it holds above this 240, they'll stay with it. It went below and then, you know, and then squeezed the rest of the day through a price point to, to 253. Okay, overall, still held the trend, didn't go below it. That market action says stay with it and, you know, maybe you get a little bit of follow through. Another one was Sperling's play of the day, you know, or play of the week. And that was last week, I believe. I'll go over it tomorrow. But this too, stock could go down 20%, blah, blah, blah. Bottom line is we started talking about this, I think, right above here. And there was some faulty action. And then with the, with the, you know, with the article, it was only down like 60, 70 cents. I was like, wow, that's taking it in stride. And then um, you know, it reversed, traded above here. So even if you got out of some, you came back. And now it's right back to these highs here. Earnings are coming out soon, so we'll see. But overall, you, know, you can't just you know just trade what you read you have to trade what you see and right here this was nice positive action you look at tesla something that we put 140 to 160 dollar price target back with the street it now is in the lower end of that range so many different times people like red dog goldman downgraded it you still think 140 to 60 or red dog you know barons wrote a negative piece of it i'm like well let's see what happens here First things first, you know, this day, if he got out of the way when Goldman came out with the piece after the exhaustion gap, you had an entry right here with this red dog reversal. And then what did it do? It snapped right back above the 21 day, something that Tesla's been above for a long time. So you did have this quick move down because it is Goldman Sachs, but what'd you have? Red dog reversal. And even if you didn't want to do it here on this digestion in the inside of this range, this gap up could have got you involved, and now here you are. It's been trending very well, very strong. There was even a note out today that got me trying to be cute on the short side um, about what I, I'm not even get into it. But anyway, close strong. You know, do you, can you trim and trail? Yes. Are earnings coming out Wednesday? Yes. So you have to know your time frame. But all, all in all, great vehicle on a 5, 15, 30 minute time frame, however you're looking at it. You know, the only way you don't like it is if you're short it and you, and you read all these articles that say why you shouldn't own it. But the stock action has been saying, own this one. Swing trade it, macro trade it, whatever you do. Anyway, next thing's next. A chart that hasn't been saying to own it until after earnings was Apple, right? Apple, stock that has been a go-to stock for me, you know, for a long time. Changed right back here. Remember when it broke this level and then it um, broke this level and then, you know, from all the way down in this trend, there were some, some trades along the way. 
Always better to be more short than long, but I like to you know, look for trades like this. If you guys are a part of the VTF, you remember this nice juicy trade. This was you know, back here when you had your red dog reversal, you had a gap up and go, and then it consolidated, and then it failed here, and you got out of it. So it gave you a nice two-week trade, and that's really what you've had with Apple all the way to the lows here. So with that said, you know, we have this lower range, okay, which we've been trying to see if uh, we can get some kind of bottom formation, okay, which we still don't know if it's a bottom formation. All we know is that you have a little bit of a left shoulder, a double bottom. Some made some money here, remember, with that red dog reversal at 393. And then on earnings, okay, came in. And you could have done this a lot of different ways. For those following me on the VTF, saw that into earnings, took some calls because I wanted to be involved. It wound up working out. Then after flagging for three days, I'm like, you know what? We could be a buyer here versus gap. That's step number one. I don't think I bought it when it came back above this 435, but somewhere around 438. Then we came in on that Monday, I believe, and said if we could take out this trend line and trade above 441, 445, that's your ad. Then we trimmed some into this move. But then what did Apple do again? It gave you a nice flag, another commitment move that triggered above it on Friday, and then here was your follow through. So this is probably the first night in a while, I think, out of the last, like, I think since here, maybe there was one other that, I, that, I'm, not, that I'm not involved in. You know, I'll probably be crying if it gets to 500. You'll hear me saying, I trimmed and trailed my way out of it. But at this point, you know, it, it still acts well. You still can get this gap fill. Uh, it did close above the 200 day, something it hasn't done in a while. But for me, I took the trade and that's that for a little while. As far as some other things setting up, LinkedIn's going to need a few days to digest above this gap. BMW, I think, a few days digesting above this gap. It can go. Facebook, nice continuation. This is a good example of a stock that had a huge gap up, digested for two days, and on the third day, triggered. And that's what we're going to try and go over tomorrow. What could trigger that has a nice gap up after earnings to continue? Sort of like this soda that had a nice you know, gap up. Um, it's been hanging out, digesting, so you could maybe trade long versus this, and if it were to get above this little flag, it can continue. So in August, what you want to do is you want to be tactical. You want to look for things to do. Okay, you might not want to be all in, but you don't need to be all out, and you don't need to just be short because you know, people are saying that's what typically happens in August, because it doesn't. It all depends on what's going on. And right now, we'll stick to the trend, and then the longer we digest above that breakout, the higher the probability we continue to my target that you know, CNBC talked about over the weekend, 1725 to 1740. It does look like that can make sense, right? We're still hovering here right around 1707, so nice, clean breakout. And if we stay above it, stay above the eight-day, why change course? Remember this nice digestion? People are saying we were going to stall out here, but what did we do? We just digested a really nice move from the 100 days, so we'll see what happens there. Banks tried to break out and couldn't really go today, but they're still just hovering. Goldman Sachs broke out first and really couldn't get anybody else to come with them, but this still looks pretty good in here. You know, Goldman Sachs broke above this little price point. I wouldn't say people are like trying to talk about a, a breakout failure means banks are done, but I just think that you know maybe not strong enough today as the market wasn't ready to go. Goldman would need a macro move, but you know it was a decent trade early on. You know, Citigroup still looks like it needs a little bit more time. Um, still hanging out here. At some point, maybe we get a nice wide range bar day on heavy volume where we could add through this, you know, for a, a sexy little trade. But as of right now, it's still just hanging out in there, just lulling everyone to sleep. Um, quickly on, you know, a little bit more on high beta, Google still hanging around. It broke above this little trend line holding here. You know, some guys along a little bit into, you know, this flag, but really for it to get in motion, it's got to get above 907 to continue. Amazon, a little wishy-washy. Um, I came in long. I actually got out of it. I think for Amazon, I'm going to just wait to see if some momentum can come back. It's trying to hold it 21 day, but really for it to get going, it's got to break above here. So you could be long a little bit versus area, and then, or you could say, I'm going to just wait for this to trigger if it's going to trigger. And um, really, that's it. I think today, if you followed Sperling on, on the virtual trade floor, you were pleasantly surprised. He's still in 15, 17 positions. A lot of stocks that are, continue to move. He buys them in the hole. He adds when they break out. Lots of little things to like. Me, I've been a little bit more tactical, trying to be a little bit of a sharpshooter with a little less risk, but you could do it that way too. However you want to do it, you do it. And if you want to improve on your approach, you improve on it. If you want to work on things that you don't do well, do that too. But overall, a lot to like. Don't just believe everything you read. Believe the price action. It trumps anything that anyone has opinions about. Oh, we could be that. You know, I'm not even going to get into that paper anymore. But you know, it just seems like every time 
you know, things have a nice setup, they like bash it and then it adds fuel to the setup because people get shorted based on that and then it continues and who knows, maybe at some point they will pull in but wait for the actual chart to tell you that uh, it, it, it's finished for a while versus, you know, what people say. And that's it. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Hope we made some money today. We'll revisit this again in the morning with Brittany. Have a good night. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms.